Today, a rinse and wash tutorial with detailing Beyond Limits and Randy. Thank you so much for having me on. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? Excellent. So today we're going to be exploring rinse and washing with Randy. Have you ever done rinse and washing I before? I've never done rinse and washing. Okay, he's never done rinse and washing. Perfect. We have the Veloster, which is nice and dirty. It's got a couple thousand miles on it since the last wash behind the bus. So you know what normally happens there. Yep. <laughs> so off we go. Let's wash the car. Let's go. Ivan, so I'll be honest, as a professional detailer, I've never rinse and washed a vehicle. Can you start off by explaining what is a rinse and wash? Right, so a rinse and wash is not a hoseless wash. So a vehicle this dirty, we would actually pre-spray normally with the rinse mm -hmm. and then hose it off, just like you do with your foam can. Yes. But without all the pretty foam and everything. And then from there, the rinse and wash takes over. Okay. The rinse and wash is a polymer and surfactant base that what it does, it emulsifies the dirt, so breaking it down into smaller pieces, encapsulates it, and lifts it off the surface with a Zwitter ionic uh, force. And Zwitter ionic means neither negative nor positive. So it's a it's a electronic charge or a static it. charge, but the opposite way. So it's lifting things off the, the paint. Now, generally speaking, is it safe? It's as safe, if not safer, than a traditional wash. So a traditional soap and water wash, the one thing that a lot of people don't realize is you're rinsing the soap off at the end. So yes, your soap is providing great lubrication. Gotcha. It's a lot of fun. You have all the suds and everything. When you rinse it off, you're left with water. Water gotcha. is a solvent and water is not slick. And then you're drying. That's when you get the possibility of marring the surface. Got it. And you're out here in Florida. It's beautiful. Yes. <laughs> you work out time outside all the time being a, a mobile detailer. Yes. You have dust that can be falling on the car. So if you have still the rinseless wash on the vehicle when you're starting to dry it, any dust that falls on the vehicle is getting encapsulated yeah. and is safely protected. Gotcha. And with a soap and water wash, we have to use a, um, a drying aid or better mm -hmm. termed a drying lubricant. Yes. Because without a drying lubricant, again, you're just moving solvent around. Now, one big question I get on the channel from a lot of detailers who mainly use their customer's power and uh, water, so no water tank, no pressure washer, right. is how can they detail at an apartment location or maybe at a business location where they may have no access to a water spigot? Would this be a definite solution for that? Oh, definitely. So all you need is a like an IK sprayer or a Merrillex or a, some form of sprayer. Yes. Pre-spray it on. And then you go at it with a sponge and dry it. Okay. Uh, with a five gallon bucket, you can do three or four cars. Okay, gotcha. So can you go ahead and show us basically how the process is done? Right, exactly. So we start off with a rinseless wash. The dilution ratio is very simple. It's one cap full for every gallon. You've got four gallons yes. of water in here, four cap fulls. Now, US equivalent, or you know, in the US here, you're not on the metric system. So that's half an ounce per gallon. And if you're anywhere else in the world, it's four milliliters to a liter. So for every four liters, you put in a capful. Okay. And basically every gallon, one capful. Is that what I Yeah, understand? exactly. Okay. Gotcha. Very simple. Then from there, because of the accumulated dust on this, we're not going to go at it dry okay. with the, um, the rinse and wash. Okay. And the sponge itself. Yeah. And the sponge itself, we're going to pre-spray the vehicle. So this is where uh, maybe a, a sprayer, um, IK sprayer would be helpful or even yeah. a spray bottle? Just yeah, to... spray, just a spray bottle or an IK yes. sprayer or even a garden, garden okay. pump sprayer, something like that. And then in the bucket, we have the Legacy sponge. Now the Legacy sponge, it's two different colors of foam. Okay. They're actually the same foam. Okay. The only reason we went with two colors, well, first of all, company colors are red and black. Yes. <laughs> but secondly, is to give you a mental tracer. Yes. So if you start at the top of the vehicle with one color, color you can flip to the other side. You know that when your both sides are dirty, it's time to go back yes. to the bucket. Okay. And as you can see, the uh, the rinseless foams a little bit. Okay. You can actually use this in a foam cannon. Okay. It's not a very efficient way of using it. It's not a very cost effective way. And I know a lot of people that are watching you are, are professional detailers. Yes. They're mobile detailers wanting to start out or yes, exactly. uh, are already there. 
The rinseless wash is by far the most economical, safe, okay. fast, and fun way of doing a car. Not so, as fun as foaming. Since you mentioned that it can be used in a foam cannon, can yeah. it be used as maybe as a to pre-treat a vehicle in, in case somebody is doing a, a foam, traditional foam wash, but they want to use a rinseless wash as a first step to pre-treat a vehicle, then rinse it down, then go ahead and do the foam cannon wash. Exactly. Is that yeah. possible? Yeah. Yes. And I'd put, you know, in your foam cannon, two ounces. Two ounces, okay. You're not going to get a thick, heavy foam like you do with soap. Okay. You're going to get a really runny foam and that is good because you want all that soap to bring it down exactly all the dirt from yeah the vehicle down okay Makes right sense now on our car we have a little peculiar situation the front end is always covered in grease <laughs> because of the fact that we're pulling it behind yes. the bus okay uh the bus itself it has what they call a road tube so it's mm -hmm. actually a tube coming from the engine out that is putting out a bit of oil all the time. And a rinse wash can tackle that? A rinse wash can tackle it, but we're gonna be using all clean okay. to help us. Okay, so I know I'll get into this more into the video, but I wanted to ask you, does this leave any protection behind or is there something else we could use afterwards? Right, this leaves absolutely nothing behind. Okay. It just leaves clean. Okay. Uh, so we are gonna be using ceramic gloss. Now this vehicle has what we call our stack. So it's an, our eight year ceramic coating. Okay. And then the three year ceramic coating is stacked on top. Okay. In a very, very specific window of opportunity. Okay, so gotcha. between the two and eight hour point uh, is when we put on the second coating and it actually combines to make a new coating. Okay. You can't mix them in the bottle, but you, we can mix them on the surface. Okay. So you'll see the vehicle is extremely hydrophobic. Okay. Uh, and very easy to wash, etc. But that front end, like I said, has all the grease and on it. Of course, using your ceramic coating, um, I'm sure it's gonna make the cleaning uh, job a lot easier. Oh, definitely. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So if any of your customers are watching, you need him to install ceramic <laughs> coating on your car. Yes. Uh, you're not gonna have to have it washed as often. Yes. And it's gonna be a lot easier to clean mm -hmm. and your car is always shiny, it's always glossy, it's always looking good. And I'm sure, for example, if a customer of mine is watching for some reason, um, if I were to install one of your ceramic coatings to the vehicle, would right. the rinse wash be a great maintenance uh, soap for them? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So I'm I'm a student next to you. I'll sh I'll let you take the show and show us how to do a rinse wash. Okay. Well, we'll start on the front end. Okay. And move from there. Let's go ahead. Before we start, I wanted to ask you, we have four gallons of water in this bucket. Is that all we need to wash an entire vehicle? Oh, definitely. Okay. One gallon is about all you'll, you'll use. Okay, so, so four like gallons it, is playing it safe. Yeah, playing it safe, giving you a bit of room to move around. Okay. And also for the mobile detailer, they can fill the bucket up once in the morning if they only have three or four appointments in the day. As okay. long as they have like a gamma seal lid or something, they can go from car to car yep. and get it done. Makes a lot of sense. Yep. So like I said, we have uh, you know a bit of a, uh, oil accumulation on here yes and definitely. rubber dust from the tires from the the bus so this is a new toy i'm trying and okay apparently it's not working that great is this something that you're gonna maybe offer in the future no, no. it's just i was tired of pumping <laughs> up the ik sprayer okay so, otherwise you can also definitely use just a normal spray bottle only it's gonna you know take a lot of toll on your hand correct yeah exactly yep. Well, this doesn't have the rinseless in it. This is our all-purpose cleaner. Okay, gotcha. Because I know, you know, I knew that this okay. is covered in oil. So in this case, since your bumper is heavily sold with uh, different factors of uh, elements on the, uh, from yeah. the road, you want to start off with an all-purpose cleaner. Right. Okay. So I'm just foaming on the APC or trying to foam on. Oh, uh, there we go. From there, we need to spray the rest of the vehicle. We're gonna let this dwell on here. Again, okay. I've got ceramic coating. I'm not concerned about the APC even drying on it. Yes. But we're gonna dump this out and okay. fill it with the uh, the rinseless wash. Okay. And this is almost empty anyways. That's why I was sputtering yes. a lot. A very easy way of calculating how we fill this. Yes. Fill your bucket first and just use what's in your bucket. Makes it super easy and simple. That way we don't have to worry about any you need it once again <laughs> yeah exactly yes so now we're gonna pre-spray okay and let's see how this works when it's full so it is a foamer so we are getting a bit of that foam look from it from the rinseless wash okay because the rinseless wash is both surfactant and polymer based
since the wheels have ceramic coating on them, I don't need to use a heavy degreaser or anything on the wheels. A racer washer do. Oh yes. So for your customers that are regular maintenance customers, yeah. you don't need to use a heavy wheel cleaner or anything. If you're washing the car on a weekly basis, rinse this wash is all you need. Okay. So right off the bat right now, the rinse this wash is breaking down all of the dirt down as we yeah, speak. Yeah, exactly. So it's breaking down the dirt, it's moving it down. Now I'm gonna re-rinse the front end here using the rinseless wash. Okay. And you can see that the all clean has actually taken a lot of this dirt off. Yes. So now we can Now that we're done with the sprayer, dump it back into the bucket. Back into the bucket. And whenever you're using a sprayer, be it an IK sprayer or something yeah. like that, you just wanna make sure that you've emptied it. Okay. Especially if you're using an APC. Now, I just wanted to ask you a question on an APC. So yep. I'm, I'm assuming the APC would be even a better choice to pre-treat a vehicle, whether you're doing a rinse wash or just a normal uh, foaming wash. Yes and no. Okay. Uh, if the vehicle is very dirty, has a lot of uh, road grime on it or road film, mm -hmm. then yes, an APC is a good choice. Okay. But if it's a non-ceramic coated vehicle, you have risks yes. inherent with using an APC. Okay. Uh, whatever brand of APC or degreaser you're using, it's just easier to use the, the rinse wash. wash. Okay. It does the job quite well. Okay, only on certain areas, for example, this one that was really bad, yeah. heavily soiled. Okay, exactly. makes sense. Yeah, since it was very heavily soiled, and then our sponge, we don't want to take it out of the water and take it to the vehicle. Okay. We actually want to squeeze it out so it's just on the verge of dripping. Okay. A couple of reasons for that. First of all, we don't want to waste product. Yes. But secondly, if the sponge is too wet, it's not going to do its job. Okay. And its job is to absorb the dirt off the car. Okay. So with the sponge being too wet, it's going to try to deposit water. Yes. But with it being just on the verge of dripping, it's wanting to absorb off the surface. Okay. So it's doing what it's supposed to do, which is absorbing. And as soon as we bring it back to the bucket, it will be okay. clean again. So can I feel it just to make yeah. sure how much water is there? Okay, so not too much water, but there's some water in there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because the viewers can't see or feel, but uh, some have the belief that they think that it needs to have a lot of water or something that it needs to be fully rinsed out. Yeah, That's no. not the case. Yeah, just on, like we say on the verge of dripping. Okay. So we let, you know, yeah. as soon as we touch it a little bit, okay. it drips. And then we start washing the car. So it's as simple as taking the sponge and going across the surface. We do not want to put any pressure on the sponge. We have to think of it as the sponge is there to distribute the product. Okay. And that's ready to dry. Why a legacy sponge and why not a couple of microfiber towels or even a traditional wash mate? You can use those. Okay. The sponge is actually the safest wash method or wash tool that we have in our arsenal okay. and that you have in your arsenal. <laughs> a wash mitt, because of the thickness of the sponge, this prevents pressure points. Okay. A wash mitt, especially if you put your hand in it, yes. you have the possibility of pressure points. Makes sense. Uh, and microfiber is designed to hold on to dirt. Okay. It's designed to take it off the surface and hold it. So with this sponge, when we get it dirty, let me just grab a bit of dirt here so see what the sponge looks like now yes <laughs> so it's not going to the grit guard and it's clean again okay it's clean again yeah and so it's it releases it vehicle. yeah it releases the dirt immediately okay that's what it's designed to do okay whereas a microfiber towel you're gonna do a section. Yes. And if you put it back in your bucket, pull it out, you're still gonna see a lot of that grit yes. on the wash media. So, and from here, if we wanted to, we could dry this. Okay. But as you can see, if we look closely here, we can actually see the dirt encapsulated inside the, the, the water droplets. Yep. So when you have a vehicle that's this dirty, 
and we haven't had a chance to pre-rinse it. Okay. What we're gonna do, and now this is where the two colors come into play. We're gonna wash with one side, and then letting the sponge absorb, we're gonna flip to the other side, and now it's gonna take that dirt off the surface. And then are we ready to dry? Yeah. Okay. Then we're ready to dry. So this vehicle, we've just driven it here, it's still hot. Yes. <laughs> and you know, in Florida, it's not cold, which is thankful for me. I hate the cold. <laughs> but if you have a vehicle that has a lot of dirt and you can't rinse it off. Okay. Then it's just double. Okay, yes. Double do. If not, you can use one half of the sponge to do the top half. Okay. Flip it over and just work your way around the vehicle. So if someone's at home and they want to do a, a pre-rinse with their garden hose, they can definitely do that beforehand. Correct? Oh, definitely, okay. yeah. And that would actually help out as well whenever you have the chance to use a, a garden hose or even a pressure washer just to do a quick pre-rinse. Right, yes. exactly. And the rinse and wash doesn't mean you don't pre-rinse. It means we don't rinse at the end. Post-rinse. Yeah. So after we finish here, all we would do is dry it instead of rinsing again with water and Correct. then go into the drying process. Yeah. Now, since I know the front end is contaminated with grease and oil, yes. I'm not going to do that first. I'm yeah. going to do that last. Okay. Makes sense. Give it a try. Sure. So you want to start off from the top to the bottom. Yeah. So you're pressing a little too hard on the sponge. Okay. So you want to go lighter? Just wanna, you just want to glide okay. it on the surface. Okay. What happens if I press it too much and I'm risking scratching the paint? With anything, pressure is not a good thing in detailing. Okay. And then I can, with all the dirt here, I'll go ahead and yeah, put it or, in the bucket. Uh, in this case, since the car is really dirty, flip the sponge and do, it again. do the same section again. Okay. Now, even though it's hot, the hood is starting to dry. I'm not really concerned about it drying on the surface. But if you're working in direct sunlight, yes, you could do one section of the car at a time. Okay. So it, think of it as a precision wash. Yes. Can you say you want to rinse it out just enough, just, not yeah, too much? Just squeeze. Okay. There you go. And then start off with another, another panel. Yeah. Okay. So you said if I would be in the direct sunlight, I would have finished this, dry this, and then start into the next panel? Yeah. Okay. If you wanted to. So work within the limits of the product. Okay. So like yourself, when you're washing with soap and water, you're having to rush. Yes. You're having to, to move very quickly to make sure that it's not drying on the surface. On Correct. You. So with this, and even if it does dry, not a big deal. They're just polymer spots that wipe right away. Okay. But there is still that possibility of it leaving water spots because we are in the direct sunlight. Again, it will it'll look like water spots. Okay. They'll wipe right off. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Yes. So while Randy has gone to get a microfiber towel to do the wheels, I'll just get the roof. That way it'll be done. And the sponge, despite its size, yes. can actually get into all these areas quite easily. The door handles. Yeah, door handles and even under this thing here. The sun visors. Yeah. Nice. Just have to squeeze it so in a little. Super versatile to fit into almost any nook and cranny. Yeah. Okay, nice. But big enough that, again, we're not putting any pressure. Yes. So when it comes to the wheels, how would we go about using a rinseless wash? So with the wheels, we just take a towel, put them in the rinseless wash. So we would just throw in the towels in the bucket? Yeah. Okay. For the wheels, what I like to do is take my towel, Go around the wheel, clean the wheel with the towel, okay. and then immediately dry it. That way I'm done with the wheel, I'm out of okay. there. I don't have to get up and down five times. Okay, gotcha. So yeah. we want to wash the wheel and right off the, right off the bat, dry it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, makes sense. But we can leave the wheels to the end. Okay. 
Well, continue on. <laughs> or maybe do the back part since it's really dirty out in the back. Yeah. So you said no, no pressure once again. No pressure. You're just gliding the sponge. And if the car is dirty like this one is, I'll come back with the other side yeah, at to, the same time. Right. To pick up the, the additional dirt. Yes. That way it's not getting into your drying towel as much. Yes. So is there a car out there that is too dirty for a rinse and wash? Not really. Uh, too dirty for not pre-rinsing. Okay. But not too dirty for a rinse and wash. Anything you would wash with soap, you can wash with a rinse and wash. Okay. And just like you wouldn't take your soapy wash mitt to a car that's covered in mud, yes. you're not going to take your rinse and sponge to the surface that's covered in mud. So it comes down to just using common sense. Pretty exactly. Much. <laughs> But again, for the professional detailer, it's a lot faster. You're not going to have your customer complaining that you left foam on their correct their driveway, etc. Uh, especially out here, you know, you're working in direct sunlight all the time. It's never cold down here, or very well cold for you, but yes. not for us. Yeah. So I have a lot of beginner detailers, or at least people who want to start off in detailing yeah. as a business, and they just can't start off because they can't buy a pressure washer right off the bat. They can't buy a water tank, so. Would exactly. you say that a rinse and wash would be a great uh, startup? Definitely. So all you really need is have access to the customer's hose. Yes. And you can bring your hose and just... Connect. So don't unravel the customer's hose. Yes. Bring your own hose and make it long enough so that you can get okay. where you need to go. Yes. And you don't need a half inch hose. You can use a 3 8 so it's a lot lighter. Okay. And then pre-spray the rinseless on the vehicle with a pump sprayer. Yes. Rinse it off. Pre-spray again, okay, and then go at it with the with the sponge. But most definitely, when somebody's at an apartment location, they can just use the rinse list itself, correct? Oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you didn't do that here. So it would just require maybe bringing along uh, maybe one or two five-gallon buckets, fill it with water, and then from there you're good to go with the rinse wash. Oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Carry on. <laughs> So it is definitely very interesting because I've always done, you know, the traditional foaming wash, wash it with the wash mitt. Right. And actually two days ago, I was doing a mobile job and my hose bursted. Yep. And it was a, an ideal situation where I was like, you know, it would be very ideal to have a rinse and wash in this situation because I don't have to worry about fixing the hose right away. Yeah, exactly. And the other aspect of this, you know, for yourself, especially, you're not carrying around as much water. Yes. You don't need to carry as much water. Therefore, your van is lighter. You get better fuel economy. Not to mention, you might not even need a van. You can use a sedan. You can detail your sedan or, yeah. or SUV. Yeah. I have uh, one of the people I trained. He uses a Volkswagen Golf. Okay. And he does full detailing out of a Volkswagen Golf, and he still has access to all the seats. So it is definitely doable to uh, detail, especially as a business. Yes. Even with just the rinse and wash. Oh, doing definitely. Washes. Yeah. You know, and if you're just using the rinse and wash, you can limit yourself to what the customer needs. Correct. So if you're, you know, you can start off just doing maintenance washes, uh, paint correction, and all that can be further down the line. Exactly. And if you know you're scheduled to do a paint correction that day, you just bring that equipment with you. Yep. Makes a, a lot, lot of, of people sense. carry everything as if they were a detailing shop with them in their vans when it's really not necessary. If I was working in the Rick Sunlight right now, would I be working just a little bit faster? You could. Is it necessary? Not really. But you know, you're That's... trying to be profitable. So yes, you, yes. Would be, you would be moving faster. Okay. And not talking to some old guy. Correct. So, <laughs> So I'm pretty much washing this vehicle, but I'm using like your method where you say I, I'll do one side with one cutter, the other side with two cutters. Is this necessary all the time to do it like no, that? No, just when it's very dirty okay. and we haven't had the chance to rinse it off. 
And what if uh, somebody wants to play it safe and they want to do it like this, the entire vehicle where they- Oh, they can. they can? They can, yeah, they yeah. can. Yeah, yeah, by all means. So maybe as I wash one section, that's when I go back to the bucket and start rinsing it back again. Yeah. Okay. Makes exactly. Sense. So once you've used both sides, it's time to put it back in the bucket. Yeah. Put it back in the bucket. So what's the big ladder on the roof for? Uh, that's when I bought the van. It was already like that, so I just kept it on there. Okay. It gives it a nice look as well, in my opinion. <laughs> so it was an electrician's van before? It was a plumber's van before. Plumber's van? Okay, yes. yeah. So in a bucket, a grid guard is ideal, but is it necessary? Not necessarily with a rinseless wash. Yes, okay. it is ideal because the rinseless wash is dropping the heavier dirt to the bottom. Yes. So that grit guard is gonna help that dirt stay at the bottom when you're agitating the water. So spending a few extra bucks would be worth it? Oh, definitely, Okay. Yeah. I think we are done with the majority of the vehicle except uh, the front wind, bumper. And the windshield. Okay. <laughs> Let me grab over here. Yeah. Okay. So there we have it. Now, you'll notice on the hood, it's pretty much dry. Yes. And we just have a few, what looks like water spots. Correct. So we're not gonna use a drying aid. So it takes care of it right off the bat. Yep, spots are gone. <laughs> nice. But like you said, once again, to repeat that to the viewers is that if we work in direct sunlight, then we would do it right after we finish yeah, washing it. Yeah, exactly. But e never, even it, if it dried like this, yes, not a big deal. That was my next question. Yeah. We could use a drying aid on the towel, but being a mobile detailer, if you can spot where you're at yes. and see that you know, 90% of the panel is dry, that's when you start drying, so you're not wasting your time moving water around on the surface. Yes, makes sense. Yeah. So you said this leaves no protection behind. What if we're washing a vehicle that has no protection already? Yeah, that's when we'll use ceramic gloss. Okay. So ceramic gloss, the less you use, the better it is. Okay. So just one spray on the panel is all you need. So the hood you've already done, so this can be used before we even start doing the actual drying. So it right. can be used while we're drying. Yeah, it's a drying, drying aid. Okay. Yeah. And it leaves some form of protection as well on there as well? About six months. Okay, nice. So not only you're drying, it's a drying aid, but you're leaving protection as well. Yeah. So this side of the car is pretty much, for all intents and purposes, dry. Yes. So we're just gonna spritz a little bit of this on. And you mentioned this car is coated. Yes. So it's safe to use on, on ceramic coated vehicles. Well, Definitely, yeah. Okay. So would it serve almost like a topper as well for the ceramic coating? Yeah. Nice. Good towel technique. I like that you're using both hands. 
So it makes it super simple to just try it off. I mean, I didn't struggle, no shit no. or anything like that. No, exactly. Nice. Yeah. Because a lot of times what happens is I, I I use a spray wax or a ceramic spray wax. Yeah. And I'll go ahead and uh, buff it out, but at least some sort of streaking would have to come back with another towel. Right. And this seemed like it did a pretty good job right Yeah, off the just back. one pass nice. is all you need. And you don't need much product, like you said. No. The, so one bottle will take you a long way. Yeah, one bottle should do about 15 to 16 cars. Okay. So it's one ounce per car is yes. the average usage. So you missed a little spot here. <laughs> Let's see how it just wipes away even yes. though that was perfectly dry. So, so, so far we're having a, a clean car already. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so for example, this one door panel, maybe a two sprays would be enough? Yeah, one near the top, one near the bottom. Okay. Is that enough? Yeah, that's good. Okay, I'll give you this bottle. And then where you sprayed is where you first put your towel. Okay. And you see even on the window, no streaks. Nice. So what if a detailer doesn't want to come back after with the actual glass cleaner? Is that possible or would you recommend coming back with a uh, dedicated glass cleaner for the No glass? need. No need to? No. Nice. So this, even the ceramic gloss is dried on the window. Yes. So give it a wipe. You'll see how easy it is to wipe. So even if you forget about this window and you move on to the other panel, you can come back and still dry yeah. it off with yeah. no problems. No problems. Now, the one thing about rinseless washing yes. is you don't get to do that really fancy uh, throw the towel on the roof and pull it towards okay. you. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. You actually need to rub it. So. Okay. So it's not an Instagram worthy moment. <laughs> but it gets the job done. Exactly. Which is more important. So there we have it, one half clean yep. and one half still with the water on there. Now here, this little, the pillar here you didn't do. Okay. So we'll just spray a little on. And with just one wipe, it's already gone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. So it's definitely ideal. So this can be used, I'm assuming, even when you're doing just a normal foam wash and. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Great drying lubricant, uh, does what it needs to do provides great slickness. Is there an event where you wouldn't use this maybe on a vehicle? Before doing a paint correction, before doing a ceramic coat. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Because you don't want to have any form of protection. No, exactly. So while you're drying the car, I'm going to clean the front bumper. Okay. Because it is the worst, worst part of our car. And because, you know, the bumper is a little worse than the rest, I'm keeping the sponge wetter than normal. And most people are not dealing with grease and oil like we are on the, the front of the vehicle, so. So this would be a, a worst case scenario. Definitely worst case scenario. Okay, and it still tackles it. It runs right. the wash with the APC. And even if you're using soap, you're going to get the same results that we got here, meaning that, you know, you, you need to do the APC first. Okay. Now our rinse wash, I assume it's great for many things within a detailing a vehicle. Yeah. Would it be also ideal to use it on door jams, to clean door jams? Door jams and actually the whole interior. Okay. So interior cleaning with rinseless is the most efficient, fast, and uh, fun, safe. well, safe and fun. Okay. Uh, basically, you can do a whole interior with two towels. Okay, is there a scenario where you probably wouldn't use rinseless on an interior? Or no. super safe? Super safe. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> so for the wheels, I'm just using a rinseless dampened towel. We pre-rinsed, and I'm just going around the wheels, I want to make sure that the cleaning is done properly so that when we come back to dry it, I'm not getting the drying towel dirty. And these uh, Koenig wheels, we ceramic coated them so they're super easy to clean. 
So again, no real harsh chemicals are necessary to keep the wheels clean. So just one spray of the ceramic gloss. Okay. Then you can dry the wheel. Okay, with the same drying towel, correct? Yeah. Because it's already so clean with the. It with should the be, paper. yeah. Okay. As long as you're not touching the uh, the tire itself, it'll be sense. fine. Yeah. So the ceramic gloss is not only for paint, not only for glass, but also for your wheels. Exactly. And again, you said it will leave around six months of protection. Yep. So if you're using it every wash your car is gonna stay super clean, easier to clean the next time. Yes. Good thing we didn't come with the bus. <laughs> it would have taken up the whole street. So with the ceramic gloss, since you can use it on wheels, I believe it would be a great add-on for beginner detailers to offer it to customers to protect their wheels at least up to six months, correct? Exactly. Now, if you're using uh, a hose and pressure washer, we have quick beads. Okay which is a spray on rinse off yes. product that okay. works exceptionally well. And that could also be uh, used to clean the wheels, yeah, not exactly. clean the wheels, but protect the wheels. Yeah, well. exactly. Nice. So that makes your job even easier. Yeah. So I'll admit, seeing how dirty this vehicle came, I would have figured maybe it needed a, a foam wash. Right. But that wasn't the case. We used a rinse no. wash and the car is just as clean as yeah. it would be with the foam wash. Exactly. Nice. Yeah, it's not a not a difficult process. Yes. It's a technique. And once you have the technique down okay. and you understand the limitations of the product and yes. how you need to work around or work with the limitations, then there's no vehicle that can't be rinseless washed. Makes a lot of sense. So this is my first time ever doing a wristless wash. Yeah. And I don't want to say it was the easiest thing for me. Well, it was super easy, but you know, this is my first time ever doing it. Now, when it comes to the second time doing it, maybe on my personal vehicle and a customer's vehicle, yeah. I think it would be so smooth. Yeah. Yes. It's going to be quick, easy, yes. simple. Which is why we also use the same towel that we used to dry the vehicle on the right. bus. Right, exactly. Because ideally, you'd want another towel. However, in this case, since it was already super clean, yeah. we just got to dry it off, apply our ceramic gloss, and we're good to go. Exactly. Nice. Would we be done on the vehicle here now, or is there something else we have to not forget about? Tire shine. Tire shine. Yeah. Okay. Now, the last thing, we know a vehicle is not detailed until the tires are clean. Correct. The tire dressing. So, cleaned it with the rinseless wash. Yes. And I'm just going to apply the tire dressing. It's always good if you open your bottle. <laughs> So a couple sprays to prime the brush. Okay. And then after that, it's just gonna be one spray per wheel. Okay. Now the brush, the advantage of it is you have great control over the brush. So I can get into that little lip quite easily. Yes. Without getting it on the wheel. And at the same time, all these little sipe lines are getting filled. And if I apply correctly, this won't sling onto the paint. No. Nice. Give it five minutes and it's dry to the touch. If it does get onto the paint, is it super easy to remove it? Yeah, just a, a quick wipe with the towel. And okay. Done. So you wouldn't actually spray the tire dressing onto the actual tire? No. Okay. Uh, Overspray on the, the wheels, et cetera, is a, okay. a real possibility. And secondly, it uses too much product. Okay. Nice, let me try it out. <laughs> So you said about two to three sprays onto the actual brush? Uh, just one or two at this okay. point. Okay. Okay, nice. So 
So once you're used to using the brush, you can get it right up to the wheel without touching the wheel. So. Nice. Yeah, and I never really thought about using a brush like this to apply tire shine. So, And then I think these paired up together would be a great uh, match. <laughs> yeah. And as you can see, it's simple, it's fast. Yes. And by the time you're done that front tire, the first one I did on the other side will be yes. dry to the touch. And now we'll just let it air dry, basically. Let it sit for like a couple of minutes and we're yeah. done. Now, if you have a customer that likes the glazed donut look, okay. you know, with the really shiny tires, yes. let it dry five minutes or so, do a second coat. Okay, and so we don't need any other product. We use the same product, except we'll use a second coat. Exactly. Nice. You can adjust the shine. Okay, Yeah. for that super shiny look. Yeah, exactly. It makes a lot of sense. So again, all in one product. All in one product. Nice. Yeah. The less products we use, the better it is. Okay, yes. The more profitable we are. Exactly. So again, I'm super amazed because had I seen the vehicle earlier and not known about rinses washing, I would have been like, okay, this requires, you know, me to foam down the vehicle, rinse it down, foam it again, use a two bucket method, wash. Yeah. That wasn't the case today. No, we not at rinse all. Rinse wash, we use a ceramic glass, and now we have the tire dressing and the car is pretty much good to go on the exterior. Yeah, exactly. A customer would be super satisfied when they came out and look at the vehicle, see how clean it was. They yeah. wouldn't have known whether we did a rinses wash or a full three-step method. No, and a friend of mine that I taught to rinse us wash about 20 years ago. Okay. He was very concerned that his customers would go, well, where did the foam go? Yes. He only had, out of all his customers, only one that say, you know, why didn't you foam the car? Yeah. He said, well, the rinse us wash for me, I had two choices. Either I adopt rinse us wash or I raise my prices. Yes. He never foamed again. Exactly. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Customers really don't care how you get the job done. Yes. They're paying you for a result. Exactly. They're not paying you for the process. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. So I, again, my final thoughts, I'm, I'm amazed. Like it cleaned it real nice. It's super shiny. It's back to a clean car. Exactly. You wouldn't have known that this was on the back of your bus. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Randy, what do you think? Amazed, super amazed. No, I have no words other than I'm amazed. <laughs> Excellent. If you like content like this, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and remember, we always answer your comments, so we love reading your comments below. And you can find Randy at Detailing Beyond Limits on YouTube. Excellent. See you next time. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you. Thank you.